In today's class, we are going to learn how to name alkanes. Remember, alkanes are those hydrocarbons that contain carbon to carbon single bond. When you see single bonds between two carbons all through the compound given to you, and you are seeing only hydrogen and carbon, that implies that the compound belongs to the family of the alkanes. I repeat, a compound that contains only carbon and hydrogen and has only single bond between carbon atoms belongs to the family of alkanes. If you want to name an alkane with ease, without much stress, just isolate the hydrogen atoms. For beginners, this time I'm talking about beginners, those who find it difficult to name. Redraw this compound and do not show the hydrogens. In that case, I'll have this carbon is this, this one is here, this carbon is here, and it has an attachment, which is one carbon, this carbon is here, this carbon is here, and it has an attachment again here, and this last one is here. So if I do not, if I remove the hydrogen atoms, this and this are the same. Now, how do I name this? The rule of naming of compounds says that, number one rule is this. Identify the longest continuous carbon to carbon chain. What is the longest carbon chain in this compound? Let's check. Remember, from where you are to where we are moving to, there must be a bond between them. I already explained that in the previous video. There is a foundation video I made. Check the previous video if you did not watch it on how to name our case. So this is the second part of it. Now, from where you are to where you are moving to, there must be a line between them. This is the line, that's the bond. So which means I'm free to move from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, because the line continues to here. As you can see, if I get to this place, I cannot move from here to here, because there is no line between them. But I am free to move this way, because there is a line. I am free to move this way, there is a line. I am also free to move this way, watch. I am also free to move this way. As long as the line continues, you are free. But I cannot move this way. After getting here, I will jump here, no, because there is no line joining them. So all these possible directions, check out which one is the longest. If I check this direction, this direction is possible, but is it the longest? It's not about being possible, it's about being the longest. Now if I take this direction from here to here, I will have one, two, three, four. If I take this direction, I will have one, two, three, four, five, six. If I take the horizontal one, I will have one, two, three, four, five, six. If I take this way, this way, I will have one, two, three, four, five. So you can see the longest is six which is this, the horizontal line. We know that coming this way is also six. As long as this is six, and the horizontal is also six, whichever one you choose as your longest, you still get the same answer. Now we are choosing the horizontal to be the longest. That's the longest chain, which is what rule number one says, identify the longest continuous carbon chain. Now rule number two says, Identify the substituents or attachments present in the compound. Remember, after locating the longest chain, you identify your attachments. What are attachments? Those carbon branches which are not part of your longest chain, they are the ones we call the attachments. And here, this is an attachment because this carbon is not part of our chain. Look at those in the chain. This is an attachment, it's not part of the chain. I have two attachments there. Now, note this. When you locate the longest chain, which we have done, the longest chain is six. That is one, two, three, four, five, six. Which means hexane will be in the name. Hexane. 
because hexane stands for six. The name of the longest chain is hexane because there are six of them. Now, rule number two says identify the attachments who have done that. There are those carbon branches which are not part of the longest chain. Rule number three says number the carbon atoms in the longest chain from the direction that will give the attachments a lower number. Number the carbon atoms in the longest chain, starting from the side that will give those attachments a lower number. Look at what that means. Look at our longest chain. This is our longest chain, six of them. We are going to number these carbon atoms in the chain. There are two ends of the chain, this place and this place, which means is either I number from this side, from the left to the right, or I will number them from the right to the left. Remember, do not assign numbers to the attachments. You only assign numbers on the longest chain carbons. The carbon atoms that are part of your longest chain are the ones you assign numbers to. Now, if I number from the left to the right, I will have it as one, two, three, four, five, and six. Numbering the chain from the left to the right, you will discover that the attachments will be at positions 3 and 5, which is 35. If I number from left to right, the attachments will be at position 3 and 5. That is 3, 5, 35. Now, if I number the longest chain from right to left, from this direction, I will have it as 1, 2, 3, 4, Five, six. If I number from right to the left, my attachments will be at positions two and four. That is 24. Remember what the rule says. Number the carbon atoms in the longest chain, starting from the side that will give the attachments a lower number. If I number from left to right, the attachments will be at 3 and 5, which is 35. But if I number from right to the left, the attachments will be at positions 2 and 4. As you can see, 24 is lower than 35. So we are going to number from the right and not from the left. This is the correct numbering. Let us now see how to write the name. Remember, these attachments here are methyl groups. That is CH3 here. This is also CH3 from the original compound. These are methyl groups, CH3. Now, we have a methyl group at position 2. That is 2-methyl. We also have another methyl group at position 4, which is 4-methyl. Now, before we write the name, this is methyl, this is methyl. So we can combine the two together at positions two and four. We have methyl, methyl. So we can say two, four. And there are two of them. We say di, which means two, dimethyl. Two, four, dimethyl. And the longest chain is hexane. Now, the full name becomes this. What is the rule saying about writing the name? The rule says, when writing the name of the compound, Write the positions of the attachments first, followed by the name of the attachments, and then write the name of the longest chain. So the positions of the attachments are two and four. And because it's at two positions, at position two and at position four, I'm going to use the prefix die, which means two of them here and here. What's their names? Is Matthew. So this is 2, 4, dimethyl, which means methyl groups at positions 2 and 4. Remember, di means there are two of them. Assuming there are three of them, it will be trimethyl. Assuming it's only one, it will be methyl. So this is 2, 4, dimethyl. Then the longest chain is 6, which is hexane. So the name of the structure on the board is 2, 4, dimethyl hexane. But before you go, CH3. Then I also have CH3. Assuming that we have hydrogens all over here, we are assuming that there are hydrogen atoms here. Give me the name of this 
type the name in the comment box and I will mark your results. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to share this video with your friends and please invite them to subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching.